In this video, I'll be playing the Redux of Carbide Carbide, a mission that comes default with Combat Mission Normandy. Uh, this is just an updated version that fixes some bugs caused by the upgrade to 3.0. And in this mission, you're playing as the lead elements of the 2nd Army Division during their breakout in Operation Cobra. So this is something personally very interesting to me. And it looks like it's an interesting map. We have you know, water obstacle and several different, different crossing points. We have a sizable force, uh, a Sherman company, less a platoon, a fully armored infantry company, and attached engineers, as well as, you know, fairly significant fire support. The generic plan here has already been lined out, but I'm just going to go ahead and explain my thought process before the rest of the game gets played. So right now, we're looking from my starting positions towards the south, where the Germans have set up a main line of resistance. And as you can see, I start with a modicum of uh, intelligence, which I'm going to put to good use with pre-planned barrages. There's going to be a 105 barrage here on Farm 1, and a 105 barrage along Hill 30. And this should allow my... Uh, my attack to gain a little bit of momentum very early on. And my attack plan itself is, is fairly generic. I'm attacking on a wide frontage, about 200 meters to 150 meters per platoon. There is at least a tank section along with every platoon. The attack here is, is meant to keep my options open essentially. In the center, I have a dismounted infantry platoon, uh, like the half tracks are, are in reserve. They're going to try and attack over this open ground, hopping from hedge field, like hedgerow to hedgerow. See if they can't get a bridgehead and attack the eastern bridge. In reserve, ready to support them, because I'm expecting minefields of some kind in the center, is a reserve engineer platoon, as well as the company headquarters of the tank company, which has a 105 Sherman attached, which could be potentially a huge boom if I have to attack the village. On the left, I'm actually taking the uh, the risk of moving this armored group here through the forested area while mounted. The objective is to break forward towards point 32 using the hedge cutters and either break out or wrap around and hit hill 30 uh, from behind. If I hit hill 30 from behind early, it should probably allow me the freedom of movement I need. Um, I'm expecting some kind of anti-tank defense on hill 30. It's almost it's too good of a position not to have a couple of pop guns there. On the right, I'm taking a more nuanced approach. Uh, I've kind of accepted that to get either to the west bridge or to towards this little ford here, I'm going to have to take the farm. So I have some elements of this platoon already dismounted. Uh, the tanks are going to wait in reserve, the infantry are going to lead. I'm going to try and scout out the farm. Uh, there's definitely enemy contact there, I just, I'm not sure how many enemy are actually in the farm. The basic plan here is to take the farm and then either turn in and attack Central Bridge or break out towards Meringi. Uh, it really depends on how many casualties I take. If I lose combat effectiveness taking the farm, then I'm going to break out and get what points I can. The interesting part about this map is I don't really have to secure any villages. I don't have to secure any of this key terrain. It just makes tactical sense to it's basically a dash towards the opposite of the map. The more units I get intact to the breakout positions, the better off I will be. Now, the briefing makes it very obvious that I'm probably going to run into enemy armor of some kind. The Panzer IVs, I'm not too worried about it. I just have to be very careful about how I advance. I can't get my infantry and my tanks separated from one another because I'm going to need the spotting ability of my infantry. Now, the briefing makes it sound like the enemy armor is in the forested areas to the rear of the map, so I wouldn't be surprised if Breakout 2 is well covered and Breakout 1 is well covered. Point 32 towards Breakout 3 is probably my best bet for early success. There isn't much good defensive ground. There's that little orchard there which I can bypass, but we'll see. I'm expecting minefields in and around the village. 
I'm going to have a very bad day if any of these flanking forwards in mind, but otherwise it should be a fairly easy attack. I'm actually pretty confident about this. We'll soon find out. So as I stated, the uh, first bombardment comes on Hill 30 and Farm 1, which we can see here, both running uh, from the German perspective. And Hill 30, you can see an air bear scene, so I'm pretty sure it's got a devastating effect. Amazingly enough, armored units managed to get through that wooded area without being attacked by anything. And then just as I think I'm safe, one of my unbuttoned commanders is immediately killed by sniper fire. All across the front, my scouting teams have contact with enemy snipers, and I use one or two men wounded to the sniper fire. It's nothing serious, and I know that the front line is being held by thin outposts, so I'm going to pick up my pace, buttoned up of course. While the snipers are annoying, they're certainly not able to stop my advance, and I've decided, especially on the left, to push through and just dismount a squad to deal with them. In the center, the snipers are spotted early before they can cause any real casualties, and they take a almost of platoons worth of fire. line might be able to get me into the farm uh, safely. Luckily the Sherman I was hunting forward manages to get a hull down shot without unduly exposing itself, but its fire is high. On the left, my drive toward point 32 continues despite the sniper fire. 
I've dismounted a squad from that group to deal with the enemy sniper, and I'm preparing to move the weapons teams across the river. How however, despite having hedgerow cutters, I don't want to degrade the tracks on my Sherman too much, so I'm sending one of the attached engineer squads to move with the advance, and perhaps blow a few of the hedges up on the left side of the map. I can only hope that my drive on point 32 continues this well. Out. As I expected, however, farm 1 is a strong point, and I'm going to have to take it if I want to get to the west bridge. Um, the good news, however, is it doesn't look like I'm going to have to do a close assault right off the bat. I've managed to get the exposed Germans into a crossfire, and support from my Sherman actually knocks out a Panzer Shirt team and most of the German infantry in that slip trench. I'm going to con continue to gain fire superiority at the farm 1 before I make any moves on it as I have all the time in the world at the moment. By the 14th minute, the situation is more or less in my advantage. I've only taken sporadic MG fire from the town that has caused only a casualty. I'm actually moving up my 105 Sherman, I'm taking a risk to try and support any movement on the central bridge. I've actually begun infiltrating several infantry squads down this on the uh, river bed. Clearing out farm one, uh, I'm pretty sure I still have slight contact in the in that building. There was a squad giving me fire in there. I haven't taken any further fire. I'm gonna put a couple of late tree rounds in it. More importantly, I've actually identified the west bridge, the foxhole, and the trench. Uh, I don't have any confirmed contact in it, but I did give it a little bit of a spray down. I'm moving towards point 32, having blown uh, large. Some defenses, hedgerows. The objective is to, again, hasn't changed, to proceed through point 32 and hit hill 30, which just finished receiving a, a preparatory barrage. And I still have significant reserves, I haven't really committed the rest of the engineers. And my forward observer uh, hasn't really taken any fire or drawn any attention to himself, so he's going to stay there for the time being.
As I attempt to move up my rifle units and the machine gun teams, they get definitive contact with the headquarters unit by the central bridge and immediately begin returning fire. The contact quickly uh, ducks its head down and I know for a fact now where exactly at least one enemy fire team is, so it's time to put the 105 Sherman to good use. I've lucked out thus far, moving it this close to the riverbank hasn't uh, resulted in anything negative happening to it, so it's time to put its firepower to the test. By the 20 minute mark, I'm attacking the West Bridge directly, and I've taken uh, pretty moderate casualties. One of the squads in the platoon Roger, is basically done. Perfect. In the center, I've linked up with the 105, but it immediately gets hit by a Panzerschreck somewhere across the river, and I luck out. It's, it's not destroyed, it doesn't lose any of its uh, weapons abilities, but it's rattled, and I won't be able to move it too close to the infantry for now. I've taken point 32, and I'm just de-trucking my infantry now. I'm going to move in on foot and attack Hill 30 from the rear. And East Bridge is being bombarded, so... Uh, I think we're about to enter the endgame. I'm making excellent time. It's only been 20 minutes. So at the beginning of this turn, uh, I've detrucked my reinforced platoon here. I'm about to begin an attack on Hill 30. I'm pushing along about 250 meters of frontage. I have a squad that took quite a few casualties dealing with snipers earlier on. So they're going to wait in reserve, and I'm actually going to uh, reinforce instead with the engineer squad, with the armored engineer squad. And of course, the squads in the center and on the right have been reinforced with machine guns, and there's a tank per squad. The idea here is to try and take Hill 30. I have a potential pack gun contact here, and my mortar actually has line of sight on it. As well, I begin taking fire from around the breakout 3 position, and yet another lucky break for me. I don't really lose anybody, and everybody gets to safety. I'm going to deal with that momentarily, but I need to deal with these anti-tank guns first. As my infantry start moving in and my tanks move up, the pack gun actually uh, starts turning around and as the turn ends, it's pinned down and facing towards my Sherman. Oh, additionally, it seems like there's a lot of Germans dug in along this hedge line and I'm gonna have to get some extra firepower up here as this HQ doesn't have enough meat in the half-track. It's risky to use the half-track as a machine gun platform. Thank you. 
However, with, with most of the enemies identified by the end of the turn, I'm in a good position to take Hill 30 with little loss. As we approach the half an hour mark, I, uh, Hill 30 has largely been cleared, the two anti-tank guns have been knocked out, and a machine gun post gets knocked out this turn. However, uh, one of my Shermans has been immobilized, and I've taken uh, moderate casualties. My headquarters team has lost a fire team. Luckily, the commander is still alive. As well, I still have to deal with these potential contacts that will fight the fight if I attempt to proceed. More importantly, I'm able to push up my platoon along the riverbank and I'm starting to get definitive contacts in place. The 105 uh, has been brought back into action after knocking out a Panzer Shrek team and I'm shelling my building into security. I have a forward observer about to call in a massive garage, bringing up the engineers to probe the bridge, make sure it's not mined, and hopefully get that under control. The west bridge has been cleared for a while, and I'm pushing forward a tank section with a little bit of infantry towards a breakout. 
uh, and t keeping another tank section by this crossroads. They're going to turn into Central Bridge. A few turns ago, however, I lost two M3s I had parked here, and I'm not sure from where. I think there's something armored in town, because it was definitely a shell. Um, as well, I'm trying to move across this field, and it turns out there's a machine gun nest. I've lost my Roger, platoon commander, um, but with the tanks in support, I should be able to deal with this machine gun before I take any further losses. So, my forces are starting to show a little bit of wear and tear, you know, most of the platoons are functionally down a squad, but otherwise, I'm I'm in a good position, uh, you know, I've only lost one tank Roger. in mobile fire mission request. 10 out fire, so I still have plenty of armament support. At the half an hour mark, I've, uh, I've basically accomplished what I was hoping to accomplish. I'm pushing the tank section and infantry towards breakout 1, I've secured the west bridge, and I'm well on my way to securing the central bridge. The central village is under heavy artillery attack. Fire for effect, over. I'm mapping up on hill 30, which will be able to provide a nice fire. I found out that there is an armored vehicle, a self-propelled gun, Roger. Fire probably for a stew, that hit these half tracks. I'm able to get, I'll be able to get rather, uh, a flank shot on it easily with the two tank sections coming in from either side. I have the engineers at the bridge building for mines, and I'm uh, getting ready to attack the village proper after the artillery barrage ends. With cover from Hill 30, it should go relatively smoothly. That'll allow every single bridge to be under my control, and I can begin to break out. side of the village in my control, I'm able to provide fire support and get a lot more intelligence about enemy forces in the village. Looks like I won't really need another barrage or even a smoke barrage to get across the bridge, as whatever forces are in the town aren't really putting back much fire my way. Near Breakout 3, however, uh, the potential contact is a lot more numerous than I suspected. Fire the tree line seems to be out. crawling with enemy infantry. And I haven't gone any contact with that aforementioned armor, aside from the stew knocked out recently. So I need to tread carefully. Losing Sherman's in the close quarters firefight while trying to clear out a tree line would be disastrous at this point in the game.
at the beginning of the 53rd minute, I get finally armored, uh, armored contact, and I hear movement actually heading towards a hedge line near Breakout 2. So it's fairly obvious that there's at least a platoon or a section of enemy tanks in the area. Despite having Hill 28 in my hands, I don't Good have good line of sight, out. so I'm in a dangerous position. I also know that there's enemy infantry in this tree line, and I'm calling down mortars on them. Uh, my infantry give fire on the Panzer IV commanders and make them button up again. There also seems to be enemy infantry at the end of the hedge line, so the, attack, the plan now is to try and swing the platoon right, as well as move up an anti-tank element, because the tanks alone might not be enough to deal with the Panzer IVs. Having Hill 28 in my hands is allowing me to put fire down on the enemy infantry near the main road, so only swing by this platoon to take them frontally will be well supported from the high ground here. In the center, my 105 is moving up with elements of my middle platoon, and we're about to mop up the east bridge. Uh, again, I've only been taking pot shots from the village, so I have fire superiority, and I'm in a good mood about how this is ending. Once the East Bridge and Central Bridge have been secured, I can remount my flanking platoons and break out and bypass the enemy armor if necessary. Perfect, over. Roger, fire perfect.
I've been dueling with this Panzer Force actually for a few minutes now, and uh, I've finally gone the flank. I managed to use a Rhino Cutter and broke through. The Panzer Fours are in a killing field, and they don't last much longer. But one interesting thing happens before I, I destroy these two. It looks like I miss a shot from this tank section, and it actually hits Hill 28 and knocks out my own machine gun team. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. There it is right now. A stray 75 shell uh, causes two or three casualties. And then immediately knocks out. I still have armor contact here, um, which I'm a little bit worried about. However, I'm going to push this tank section up to the left and see what happens. At the east bridge, although it's caused me a few more casualties, uh, I'm, I'm about to secure it. Enemies in the foxholes are dead or fleeing. Most of the machine guns are actually knocked out. At the central bridge, I'm actually assaulting with a mortar team acting as riflemen, but it's against sporadic resistance. So the village is cleared, or the parts of the village that matter are cleared. As soon as I take out this other section of Panzer Force, I'm going to break out and end this mission. By this point in the battle, it's largely just me moving to the breakout positions and leaving behind a couple of units to make sure the Occupy objectives uh, are, are fulfilled. I'm moving back a tank. One tank section will hold the central bridge and west bridge. Out. I'm leaving the armored engineer platoon to secure the east bridge as well as suppress these potential contacts. I'm still taking some rifle fire from there. Company headquarters and the 
two rifle platoons that were on the left side of the river are exiting towards breakout three. And the farm one platoon is mounting up to break out towards Mungi. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this let's play. Carbide Carbide is uh, one of the better scenarios I played recently. I'm actually very fascinated by it. He did a good job of capturing the breakout.